Chapter 30, Princesses 1 through 9. Jeffrey Gonzalez was back from his suspension. He sat in his seat in our classroom, arms folded, staring at his empty desk. Everybody else stayed clear of him, but I went up to him before class. Hey, I said. I'm sorry you got suspended. Jeffrey shrugged. Whatever. I just... I don't didn't know if you did it for us or... Jeffrey frowned. What? You know, I lowered my voice. Because Coltrane dropped that book in the cafeteria, Principal Banizowski was about to pick it up when... I didn't do it for you, Jeffrey said bitterly. I didn't do it for anybody. He was in my seat. Okay, I said. Well, anyway, thanks. Um, live long and prosper. Live long and prosper was a thing Jeffrey liked to tell people. It was from Star Wars or something. Yeah, he said, right. I left Jeffrey under his little black cloud. What was wrong with him? Usually he was drawing spaceships all over his notebook or using the force to try and make the papier-mâché planets that hung from the ceiling spin backward. Now he was just angry all the time. All right, everybody, language arts time, Mr. Vaughn said. It's free reading Friday, so get out whatever you brought to read. I'm going to do the same. Free reading Friday was my all-time favorite thing about Mr. Vaughn's class. Every Friday for language arts, we all got to sit around the room and read anything we wanted to, as long as it wasn't a book for school. Even Mr. Vaughn read. He'd been reading an Agatha Christie mystery called Murder on the Orient Express. I pulled out The Mysterious Benedict Society and The Prisoner's Dilemma and opened it to my bookmark. I was just starting the part where The Mysterious Benedict Society falls into a trap when I heard Mr. Vaughn ask someone across the room, The Seventeenth Princess? What's that about? I looked up with a squeak. Danny and Rebecca were gawking too. The Seventeenth Princess was one of our fake covers. Someone was reading one of the BBLL books in class, and Mr. Vaughn had caught her. It was Lacey Edwards. Lacey was the tallest girl in the fourth grade. She looked up at me in horror. The book wasn't about Seventeen Princesses, of course. Inside, it was, Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. I gave her a look that said, Make something up! Lacey had to look at the cover again to see what the title was. It's about the 17th princess, she said. Mr. Vaughn laughed. Well, I gathered that. What happened to the first 16? Well, the first one fell into a pot of boiling oil, Lacey said. Ouch, Mr. Vaughn said. The second one ate a poisoned apple. Always a classic, said Mr. Vaughn. The third one got sat on by a giant. Some of the kids around Lacey laughed. People were starting to pay attention to her. The fourth one turned into a werewolf. The fifth one was eaten by a giant shark. The sixth one choked on her own snot. Ew, the class said, half laughing and half gagging. I sucked on a braid. Why in the world did we have to make it 17 princesses? The seventh princess got kicked in the face with a soccer ball, Lacey said. She was really getting into it now. The eighth princess, she stuck her tongue in an electrical socket. The other kids cheered for that one. Mr. Vaughn looked around at them, amused and concerned at the same time. The ninth princess accidentally sat on her crown, Lacey said. The tenth princess... All right, all right, Mr. Vaughn said. I'm afraid if we go all the way through to 17, language arts will be over before anyone's done any reading. He shook his head. That's a strange book you've got there, but it sounds fun. Mr. Vaughn left Lacey's desk to go sit in the big chair at the front of the room and read his book, and I breathed a huge sigh of relief. I saw Danny and Rebecca do the same. That had been a close one. I guess we should be lucky the cover hadn't been smell my finger. I was about to go back to my book when I saw one other person looking across the room at me. Trey McBride. He glanced over at Lacey, then back to me, then disappeared behind an amulet graphic novel.